Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. This is Josh Weinfeld here with Music Marketing TV. We're gonna dive into some of the key updates and improvements with Synthesizer V2 and how you can use them in your next vocal production. So I really like the sound of Kevin 2, uh, the new updated version of Kevin, uh, on this little demo here that I'm working on. I feel like it has the most expression that matches the style that I'm going for right off the bat, but there are obviously a lot of ways that uh, we can tweak that and massage it into the style that we're looking for. So one of the most important newest features that I want to look at is the render speed in Synthesizer V Studio Pro 2. Uh, rendering times have been cut significantly, so it's up to three times as fast. That's 300% faster than the original version of Synthesizer V, uh, even on a basic computer or laptop. This means that you can finalize your vocal tracks and work on things much more quickly and efficiently. This is crazy. This is almost real time. So you can see I'm changing the vibrato modulation here and it's updating in real time as it's playing back, which is really helpful to audition. I know you don't feel my pain. Don't you talk to me that way. try the same thing with the vocal mode. I know you don't feel my pain. Don't you talk to me that way. I know you don't feel my pain. Don't you talk to me that way. I know you don't feel my pain. This is super cool because I can actually change all the parameters in Synthesizer V in real time. And as it's playing back, you can see the waveform just rendering and rendering super quickly so that I can hear it back and make changes on the fly. So I think my favorite new feature that I wanna talk about next is called the phoneme timing panel. And this is something that I've been kind of envisioning for a while now. So what it does, the new phoneme timing panel gives you direct control over the timing of each individual phoneme. Uh, you can simply drag the boundaries around and adjust the consonants and the vowel placement, and then you can just play it back to hear how it sounds. So you can find this on the bottom left here of your screen called the phoneme timing, and it opens up this little panel here, and you can see that there's a blocking of every phoneme based on the words that we've typed in and the lyrics. So for example, I have this, my pain, and this N kind of pain comes way later than I might expect it to. So I can solo this up. I've switched over to Solaria to test out a new voice. My pain. And I can move this N. Oh, let's see over here. My pain. So I've moved the N closer. Maybe I can try it even closer if I want that N to attack earlier. My pain. So in context. I know you don't feel my pain. She goes to that N much quicker. And say I want to put a little more emphasis on it, I can just kind of drag this up, and that N is going to hit a little bit harder now. I know you don't feel my pain. We can do the same thing over here. I want this me to come a little bit later, a little bit more off the grid, but I don't want to actually move the notes themselves in the piano roll. So I can line up this me here and just stretch this out. And let's see how that sounds. Don't you talk to me that way. Maybe a little bit too much. Let's dial it back. Don't you talk to me that way. Another thing I'm thinking is I want to make this a little bit more articulate, a little more spicy in the performance. So I'm going to move the uh, attacks of notes a little bit closer to the start of each of them. So I can move this T, shorten it up. Don't you talk. Don't you talk to me that As opposed to. Don't you talk to me. See here, the T is much longer. So I want to shorten that up. I can do the same thing here. Don't you talk to me that way. We can do that uh, here as well. 
with that. Don't you talk to me that way. And what I want to also do is emphasize two. I want to hear that ooh sound a little bit stronger. So I'm going to raise this up like this. Don't you talk to me that way. So here she really lays into that. Talk to, to. It's much more strong here as opposed to this if I were to take it away. Don't you talk to me that way. To, she backs off a little bit. Don't you talk to me that way. One other spot I want to try this is right here on feel my pain. I want to hear a little bit more my pain. Less emphasis on my and more of a longer pain. So we really draw out the, the emotion of that. So I'm going to just try and shorten up the A-Y, the I part of my. And so this P is going to kind of drag on a little bit longer. I know you don't feel my pain. Yeah, yeah. The next thing I want to check out are the updates to vocal modes. So something that's really cool is that you can now independently control a vocal mode's pitch, timbre, and pronunciation separately. Or you can globally uh, adjust the whole vocal mode by itself as well. Um, and this is really powerful because you could mix and match like a powerful pitch vocal mode or a soft pronunciation at the same time and get some really cool uh, interaction between those vocal modes and shape the vocals uh, more effectively. So if I click this plus on any of these different vocal modes, you'll see this opens up into pitch, timbre, and pronunciation. And by default, when I move the whole slider, all of the uh, parameters move together. But if I want to control one or the other, I can move them independently. And when I close this back up, you'll see that the lines are representative of where each pitch, timbre, and pronunciation slider is within that vocal mode. So for example, I could combine a soft timbre with a belting pitch. So we can see what that does. You can see that the pitch curve rendered, it's much more aggressive, but let's see how it sounds with the soft timbre as well. I know you don't feel my pain. If I take away the soft timbre, I know you don't feel my pain. Another combination we could try would be a mellow pronunciation, for example, if I want to take a little bit of the edge off of the way that the words are pronounced. And then I could add a soft pitch and soft timbre. I know you don't feel my pain. And the really cool part about this is that when you go to automate any of these uh, vocal modes in our parameter panel, so for example, I have mellow pulled up here and say I want to decrease mellow over time, you're going to actually see the mellow slider move with each parameter inside of it relative. So watch over here. I know you don't feel my pain. So inside of this, I have timbre and pronunciation at different levels. But when mellow is automated, they move at the same rate and they move relative to each other. So it holds that uh, respective uh, adjustment that I made from earlier. And just keep in mind, while I've been doing all of this, it's been rendering so fast, I've never had to stop. It's blowing my mind how quickly things are changing and how quickly I'm able to adjust things on the fly. So the next new feature I want to take a look at is the expression pad. And you'll find this in the notes panel up here. Uh, I really like to use this to kind of shift an overall performance one way or another. I find that it's a more subtle approach than using the vocal modes. Um, it doesn't change as drastically, but it's nice to shift the whole performance to maybe a little more vibrant or refined or raw or rigid. And as you continue to use these with this expression pad, you'll get the feel for how uh, it changes the vocal performance uh, in a way that you might want. I know you don't feel my pain. I Just to come back to it for a sec, something that's been actually bothering me a little bit is this P in pain is very articulate. Feel my pain. You, can hear, you can hear the front of that note, pain is very, very plosive and, and clicky. Um, so I'm going to come back to our friend, the phoneme timing panel and just bring that all the way down. Feel my pain. Maybe a little bit too much. Feel my pain. Feel my pain. Feel my pain. That's a lot smoother. Man, this, this, this control is so fun. I love this. So I would play around with it. The expression panel is really nice to just kind of, you know, subtly nudge a performance one way or another. Uh, I don't rely on it a whole lot. I, I use the vocal modes more, but it's nice to just come over here and see what you can do with just a little bit of a, uh, 
a different approach to uh, emotionally changing the performance. So AI retakes uh, has also seen a major update as well compared to Synthesizer VStudio Pro version one. Um, if you look over here also in the notes panel, we have four buttons. We have this all and then timing, pitch and timbre. So the same way that we had uh, with vocal modes, different control over pitch, timbre and pronunciation, we now have AI retakes, but we can do them separately or we can do it all together so we can generate new performances in different ways. I know you don't feel my pain. I know you don't feel my pain. I really like what it just did to the pitch. So now I'm going to try and just change around the timing uh, with a new AI retake for timing only. I know you don't feel my pain. I know you don't feel my pain. Yeah, I really like what it did with don't here. It has a nice groove to it. I know you don't feel my pain. Now we can try some more for timbre. I know you don't feel my pain. I really like I now. I sounds nice and smooth. I know you don't feel my pain. But I don't like feel my pain as much. So I'm going to switch these back maybe to take two. I know you don't feel my pain. Yeah, take this guy and just turn vibrato down slightly as well. I know you don't feel my pain. Yeah, nice. So another major update to the workflow in Synthesizer V Studio is with the smart pitch curves. So what this does essentially is allow you to place points along the pitch curve and actually move them in groups or move them relative to each other. And it's much smoother than just drawing the line by yourself because it's using the AI engine to actually generate these pitch curves in an intuitive way and a more human way. So what I can do to enable this is come up here and select pitch control points mode, or I can select the freehand mode, which is similar to version one, where I can come and kind of redraw the curve as I might want. I know you don't feel my pain. So I want to adjust the pitch uh, transition between feel my pain here. So what I can do is just double click to add some points and I can actually select them in groups and drag them up, drag them down. And you can see that it moves and regenerates this pitch curve in a very intuitive way uh, that keeps everything around it mostly intact. You don't feel my pain. I want it to dip a little quicker. You don't feel my pain. Might want it to go dip down actually a little bit. You don't feel my pain. And this needs to transition as well. You don't feel my pain. You don't feel my pain. Yeah, I really like that now. The cool thing about this is I can select all of these. I can actually move them to create the same kind of uh, effect later in the uh, performance. I'm going to put that back. Now, when you're done working on some pitch edits, your uh, screen might look something like this. You have a few of these freehand edits and maybe you have a few of the control points that you've adjusted as well. So I can go back into uh, note editing mode. And something that's so cool is that I can move these notes. And if I go back into the pitch uh, control points mode or freehand mode, you'll see that everything shifted. Uh, relative. It shifted with the notes, which didn't used to happen if you used pitch deviation or another method in the old version of Synthesizer B. This is a really smart way of kind of future proofing your edits and uh, really intuitively making changes. Another new and really intuitive feature that's been added in this new version of Synthesizer V is the ability to control mouth opening. So what this does is allow you to control the coloration that is uh, created when you're singing based on how open or closed your mouth is. So if you think about ah, right, you can hear that change in kind of formant in the way that my uh, vocal sounds based on how open my mouth is. And we have that same control now in Synthesizer V. To me, this is a really simple but important way to uh, kind of define how a vocal sounds and how we can further control the vocal performances in Synthesizer V. Don't you talk to me that way. So I might want to change the vocal uh, with talk. We can experiment with talk or talk, like how open is the vocal? Um, so we can use the new mouth opening feature and this looks and works just like it does with any of our other parameter panel controls. I can just draw here, a little open for talk. Don't you talk to me that way. Don't you talk to me. Don't you talk to me. So I do find that the mouth opening control is a little bit sensitive. So I try to stay kind of very gently um, in between what we mean, like a fourth 
up and a fourth down of this graph here. So for example, I can create some control points here and we can listen to how that sounds. Don't you talk to me that way. And without it. Don't you talk to me that way. Don't you talk to me that Don't you talk to me. Don't you talk to me that way. So you can hear that when I drop down, he goes talk. It's like his throat opens up and his mouth just kind of drops a little bit. If we go the other way. Don't you talk to me that Don't you talk to me that way. You can hear that it's talk. It's very ah, very open, right? Don't you talk to me that way. Just to push it a little bit so you guys can hear this. Don't you talk to me that way. Don't you talk to me that way. So to hear this versus uh, zero change. Don't you talk to me that Don't you talk to me that way. And again, you can see how quickly this renders, but this is such a really cool feature. And I really, you know, I'm starting to fall in love with how this is such a human way of thinking about editing the vocals that Synthesizer V creates. So I just wanted to touch on two more important features uh, and updates with Synthesizer V. The first being we now have Korean support added for Synthesizer V. Uh, so anyone that's been waiting for this, the time is now here. You can now uh, use the new voices in Synthesizer V to sing in Korean. And the second thing I wanted to mention is that all of the voices from version one, uh, you're now able to update those to work with the new engine in Synthesizer V Pro version two. And there's also a new uh, product panel within Synthesizer V Studio Pro two, where I can see all of the uh, voices that I have installed on my system. I can upgrade them if I choose, I can uninstall, I can add a product uh, with the serial code that I've purchased. I can also come over here to the all products window and I can do trials of different voices. I can buy different voices. Uh, so this is really a much improved menu compared to the V1 uh, where you had to go on their website and find the keys and install them and, and all that stuff. So uh, there's definitely a lot of really cool features that I encourage you to check out in the new version of Synthesizer V. I'm still exploring them myself, uh, but it's really improved my workflow and I hope it does for you guys as well. Uh, thank you for checking out the video. Thank you for joining us on Music Marketing TV. If you haven't already, please consider subscribing to the channel and helping uh, Music Marketing TV grow. And stay tuned for more videos about Synthesizer V Studio Pro version 2, as well as all things music marketing and uh, music technology. See you in the next one.